Hello there, my name is Ismael and welcome to another Blender Daily Tip and today we're going to be looking at how to make this uh, kind of animation uh, plant growing and uh, you can see how the branches are stemming off uh, this uh, main stem and uh, some leaves growing from the uh, from those uh, vines as well so yeah let me just turn off some of these effects so that you can see how this looks okay let me use a different HDR image here <coughs> so this looks even better I think okay so uh, let's uh, go in and start animating this so uh, if you want to watch the entire process of uh, also adding these extra leaves uh, falling down because the, the main focus of this tutorial is uh, uh, this vine growing and uh, maybe the leaves as well stemming from that uh, but uh, I'm not going to make the entire scene so if you want to watch the time lapse you can go to my second channel uh, Blender Money and uh, I'll be uploading that there uh, don't forget to subscribe to that as well uh, so yeah let's dive in and uh, get started so I'll ha I have a new Blender project here and I'm just first going to show you how to make this kind of animation uh, let me go to layout here how to make this animation of the vine kind of growing so to do that let's uh, add a curve uh, because you can do that using only curves so let's add a, a basic curve uh, this is going to be the shape of our stem let me rotate it 90 degrees and uh, let's also give it some bit of character by adding some control points and uh, just moving them around so that we get a nicer uh, shape something like that <coughs> and uh, we're going to need this to have some depth uh, so let's go to the curve settings add a bevel give it some depth uh, so if you have depth now we can control uh, the thickness uh, from top to bottom uh, using a taper object uh, under geometry here so if uh, a taper object is just uh, another curve object that you use to control the shape of this uh, bevel so select the curve and then under the geometry select uh, this as your bevel object as your taper object and you can see <coughs> if I rotate this 90 degrees uh, this object here is taking up the shape of uh, the bevel of this object is taking up the shape of this uh, taper object and if I add a few control points and control you can see how I'm controlling uh, the depth the, the shape of this Let me just make it you can see how you're able to control <coughs> how you're able to control uh, the shape using a taper object like that <coughs> but we don't want it to be this weird so let me just add a simple taper object so if if this was straight uh, vector let me convert it to a vector you can see it's almost not controlling the shape and uh, if but uh, if you move this away from the pivot point let's see what axis is oh we need to select this and uh, make it uh, the type of object you can see if you move it away from the pivot point sorry the I think it's called the pivot point you are controlling uh, the width or volume of the curve so you can see <coughs> and uh, if you add another control point say in the middle there and just move this so that it aligns how the center of the object you can see now we're making this at the top really small and uh, at the bottom here really wide as you can see now you can also move this up and down to control uh, that thickness and uh, if you add another control point here subdivide and uh, push this to be at the same to align with this cursor and uh, just to make sure that it's at uh, centered at that point i uh, can select this object cursor to select it so, so that the pivot point is at there and then select these two scale them and uh, make sure that uh, your p control point your pivot point is set to cursor then select this scale them to the x-axis 
and you can see now if we rendered if we went to rendered mode and turned off uh, extras you can see that uh, we are not even seeing that line we're just seeing that shape so and uh, if we animate uh, this position you can see in the z-axis you can see how I'm animating this <coughs> but uh, it kind of stops at this point here actually you can go as far but uh, you lose uh, that kind of shape that we have there but uh, if you select these two points and start moving them you see how you can easily animate <coughs> the uh, the curve so we just need to, to have a way to control uh, this outside edit mode because you can add keyframes in edit mode and uh, the six so uh, to control these two points you can just use control h to add a hook new hook and then we, if we move this we are moving those points as well <coughs> so now if i add a keyframe here uh, i will need to start off with nothing appearing and then maybe at around 40 frames and bring this up you can see so basically that's how i animated uh the stem uh, let me show you here <coughs> and you can see the taper objects i was using so you see we, i have a lot of taper objects here almost i have i think five or six and uh, each of these taper objects is controlling uh, every is is controlling a stem or branch you see here. So uh, this is controlled by another taper object, and uh, this is also controlled by a different one, and uh, this one a different one, and they all have the same animation. You can see just two frames moving from one end to another to kind of how that effect and then i off offset uh the animation so if i select all these let me first hide this ground so that i can easily select these <coughs> just hide this for a second select this and this, this. you can see that uh, they are all being offset Let's see you can see that uh, their ti their timeline has all their keyframes have been offset and let me select individually so you can see this starts from there and that from there <coughs> the animation is offset a bit to kind of produce that effect let me show you how you can offset that so let's go to this so you would duplicate uh, this a few times shift d scale this down rotate it to any branch and uh, the, the great thing about this is that uh, you can even add more control points and uh, you, you still won't lose uh, the animation so something like that let me make sure to remove any extra keyframes not to add extra keyframes that I don't need so you can see it doesn't matter if you add extra control points in the curve uh, the animation will still work so <coughs> yeah so we don't want this branch to be too f too long like that so we can have it be short and uh, make a duplicate this rotate it around maybe this time do something like that duplicate this <coughs> you can see but now they're using the same taper object that's why you see that uh, uh, the animation is not kind of offset in the same way that we we had it for the main uh, for the example so <coughs> to, to create that uh, you need to duplicate this uh, the number of times you have uh, for these uh, extra uh, vines and uh, the problem is that uh, if you try duplicating this 
like this because of these keyframes it, it will just uh, this cursor is going to uh, this uh, uh, empty or hook I will just snap back to its original point so <coughs> that's why you see I have an extra box around each of these taper objects uh, to kind of act like a parent for this so that I don't have this uh, uh, kind of sliding back into its position so <coughs> so what I did was to add an empty uh, empty I decided to use a cube just to make sure that to kind of box all the to kind of box uh, those control point uh, into one object so you would parent this uh, to the uh, to the box and this to the box as well control P and now you can move this any to any position without uh, having this snap back to its original position now you can make as many duplicates as you want <coughs> I think these are too big so I'll just scale I'll just scale the parents and uh, this will not affect the keyframes of the hook so and now I can just select <coughs> this object uh, this taper object and uh, change is taper object to this here it shouldn't affect change the animation because they're still sharing the same animation or keyframes so <coughs> select this uh, select this uh, give it a different taper object uh, select this why is this messed up Okay, I'm not. Oh. No, it shouldn't have a bevel object. It should only be a taper object, not a bevel object. So. <coughs> then. Then select this and give it uh, its own taper object like that. Now they have different taper objects, but uh, because. Uh, these animations are not offset uh, they are still playing back at the same time so to offset them I'm going to start with this and uh, I know that uh, I want it to start at around here when this is crossing it so I can I know this is using this as its control as its as taper object so I can offset that to around that that position and uh, you can see how it will start growing after this grows and uh, also extend this so it's using this, so I would have this start after this grows, maybe around there. And basically, do the same for it, for all the uh, for the rest. Uh, so this here uh, is using this taper object, so I can so at around here. That's where you want this animation to start. Let me just remove this. You can do that if you want in your time. So, yeah. And then for the flower, for the leaves, I uh, just make a simple leaf. I'll just add a plain rotating 90 degrees. Uh, subdivide it. Apply the subdivisions. You don't really have to, but uh, then maybe just make a simple flower here. Simple leaf push the pivot point and now you can start you can start by animating the the leaf so give it a simple animation so kind of give it a bouncing animation so it starts at a scale of zero so scale by zero and then kind of grows at around here I want it to exceed uh, its growth so that it will give it that kind of bouncing effect maybe just expand this a bit uh, so to make your animation look a bit more smooth you can change the frame rate to about 60 frames so that it looks even smoother so something like that and now you can start positioning uh, your 
are you your flower so the problem is that uh, we have these keyframes and uh, they also set the position so if i start moving this and i play back you see it snap it will snap back to its original position uh, so what you can do is just control t control tab uh, and uh, change to the uh, to the curves editor and uh, delete all the rotation uh, location and uh, I uh, just have uh, the scale uh, keyframe, so I'll select all these and uh, delete those uh, so that I only have uh, the scale. Now, if I move this object, you can see it will just stick there, but uh, retain is a scale animation. So then you will position that duplicate, rotate. You can make your leaves better and also make sure that uh, you go in all direction and make sure that uh, uh, this kind of is sticking to the plant. I'm not going to be too careful with this. So, uh, And then after you can offset uh, the position in the same way we offset uh, the, the position of the vine. So you know, I want this to start from there. So I will offset this to start from there and then this for this leaf also offset it so that it starts uh, from around there you can see now uh, then you would add more leaves like that uh, to get the animation then add materials and everything so if you want to wipe the entire process i will have the i'll have the animation uh, the time lapse uh, uploaded to my second channel blender money and now uh, you can watch the entire process from there I don't want to have this too long, uh, but uh, this is the final results we got. I added some particle system and uh, some volumetrics and some uh, and uh, a ground to have that stand on. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you want the project files, you can become a Patreon, and uh, I'll send them for you to you. So thank you for watching.